Hello and welcome to our lesson on the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video we are focusing on the calculator home screen and solving equations. And some of the things we are going to look at are solving equations using a little known thing on the calculator called the numeric solver which can be found in the maths menu. What happens when we're trying to solve it with two or more variables and what happens if we have multiple solutions. So if we are trying to solve this equation on the TI-84 plus CE, we wouldn't get actually an answer. And the reason for that is it doesn't have CAS capability, and that's computer algebraic systems. And in fact, if I press enter on here, it gives us an answer of zero. Maybe something you didn't think it would get, but in this case, it actually means not true. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That's because I got the equals button from the test. I want you to have a quick think and perhaps pause the video about different ways that you actually could have come up with how to solve that using this calculator. Now you should know the answer without using the calculator, but how would you solve it using the calculator? So one way to do this is to graph each side of the equation and then see where they intersect. We just got it on the screen here. We would normally maybe have to adjust the window, but we can see that they both fit on and then do intersect and we would find the X answer once I've chosen both lines where they intersect and it's negative 3.6. Notice that the calculator now stores that value as negative 3.6. And if I go up and copy that equation again, it will now give me the answer of one, which means it's true. That when X is negative 3.6, it's true. When I had a number before, I actually had X stored as two. If I go up and copy that, it will say that it is false. It will give me a zero. So basically working binary. Another way is to actually graph the whole equation um, rearranged to make it equal to zero. So that would make that uh, plus 18. And find where that line itself, let's clear that one now, crosses the x-axis. So we'd have to choose zeros and then we would find that it actually would be three, negative 3.6 again. And we can see that's roughly about right there. But I wanted to show you another little feature that you may not be aware of that may or may not help you. And that feature is found in math and at the very bottom. So I'm going to scroll up to get to the bottom and it's called numeric solver. And in that case, we can either type in two equations or we can type in two sides of that equation. So we got 5x plus 8, come down and negative 10. Now, don't forget, I've set my calculator up like this. Don't forget this tab here is actually the F5 key on your calculator. I'm using the software. Um, there's the equation that we're going to solve. The bounds, well, there's only one, one solution, so I'm not worried about the bounds. And if I click now solve, it will give me the answer. A really nice thing about that feature is if I then type in X here, it then returns at negative 3.6 as before. So you can have a play with that, and that will work for other ones. I'll set one up now and show you that one as well. So one that's a little bit more complicated is this one here. You could argue it's not, it just looks complicated using the fraction button and some numbers. But when I try and solve this one, and we leave that, it says, gives us this answer that there's none real answers. And I want you to have a think about that. Again, perhaps pause the video. Why is that? Well, the reason is, is when we go to solve it, that actually the x value we chose, uh, there's no real numbers. At least we can't square root and get a negative. Um, so therefore, we no, need to choose a number that's on the positive side. And if we choose a number that's on the positive side, uh, let's say 0.1, and solve that now, it will give us the answer that is true for this question. And that is the reason why. And now I want you to think about what's going to happen if we have uh, two variables. Let's say we looked at the volume of a cone um, at a certain value for its volume. So I've put in the formula for the volume of a cone and given a volume of 15. And let's see what happens to this one. All right, we're going to go solve without doing anything else. And there you go. It gives us an answer that let's hope is true. Uh, we could test that because as I said to you, if we go back into normal calculator screen now, those values um, will actually be stored as R and as uh, H. So if we actually use them both, it should give us an answer of yes, 15. Brilliant. Now we know there's an infinite number of values for R and H that will give a volume of 15. So how could we find other ones? Well, to do that, what actually you need to do is when you get to your bounds, if you want to say to have a, a radius of a different value, let's say three, 
you'd come down to the h value and it would solve it for the radius of 3. If you wanted the height, say, to be 7, and you came up to the, the radius and then click solve, it would give you the radius for a height of 7. So it worked for more uh, two variables and more than two variables, which is a good, nice little feature. So to finish, let's look at what would happen if we had a fairly simple equation that has more than one solution. And again, you may want to pause the video. So I've said that a few times in this video and think what would happen. So we should know from this situation here that there are two answers, uh, plus or minus three. Um, but what will the calculator give us? Well, let's um, go back to what it had before. So I think it was zero there. And let's solve it. And we can see that it gives us the positive one. The reason is that it will just go to the closest one. And in this case, obviously, it's in, in between, but it will just take you to one of them. To get the other answer, we have to have at least a rough idea of where it could be. So if I went to negative 7 and then press solve, it would then give me an answer pretty much as negative 3. And we know there's a bit of rounding error, so we'd have to be smart and go, OK, I know that that actually is negative 3. Uh, let's just tell you what would happen if we had to choose negative 4. And we see that because we chose the value closer to the real answer, uh, less um, error happened and therefore we got exactly negative 3. And as I said before, if you go back to normal calculator screen, that number is stored as the variable for that moment in time. So I hope you found that useful and thanks for watching.